Okay, it's uh, 930 Central Time, so let's go ahead and get started. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, the demographic and health surveys are amazing data, and we're delighted to be able to apply the IPOMS dissemination system to make this great data even more accessible. So today's webinar is IPOMS DHS, uncovering the secret to the best tool for DHS comparative analyses. Um, a little bit of uh, technical details. So if you could use the question and answer function, you're gonna see this at the bottom of your Zoom, your Zoom screen. Um, if you could use that to answer, to, to break in with questions, that would be great. Um, and it would be great if you could use that rather than the chat. Um, we'll be periodically breaking for Q&A, but enter your questions at any time. Um, and if we don't have time to get to all the questions today, we will be creating a Q&A document that will be posted on the website along with this webinar, which is being recorded. Um, another technical detail is that uh, there's closed captioning uh, for people who are hearing impaired. If you prefer not to um, use closed captioning, there's a live transcript CC button at the bottom of your screen where you can turn off closed captioning. All right, so um, today we're gonna start with a brief introduction to IPOMS DHS. Um, then we'll jump into some tips for using IPOMS DHS. Uh, and this is gonna follow along, the structure is gonna follow along the way that people would ordinarily create a tailored data set and download it. So we'll start with tips related to constructing your IPOMS DHS data set. Uh, then we'll talk about um, some secrets that are useful when you're downloading your data set. And finally, um, how you can best use IPOMS DHS supplemental material and making sure that you're aware of that. And I'll be demonstrating these things on the IPOMS DHS website directly. And then we'll have a brief conclusion. So um, let's start with IPOMS DHS. IPOMS DHS is a website where you can browse variables and information about them and create a data set that, with precisely the samples and variables that you want for your research question. Anyone can use IPOMS DHS and any DHS registered user can download data from IPOMS DHS. The website is, IPOMS, is dhs.ipoms.org. Let me give you a little bit more information. So, um, the point of IPOMS DHS is to allow you to get right to data analysis and spending, instead of spending lots of time downloading multiple files and harmonizing variables and appending and merging different files. Um, IPOMS DHS is micro data drawn from the demographic and health survey data. What that means is that this is individual records. It's not aggregated statistics. There are more than 15,000 consistently coded variables in IPOMS DHS, and those include all the standard DHS variables from phases one through seven, and of course, many country specific variables. The variables are all fully harmonized. And what I mean by that is that the name, label, code are the same across all samples. And um, there's complete documentation of every variable. So we've designed the system so that it's easy to get the data. Um, although we've done that, I found in talking to individuals, my students or people around the country or the world that I've talked to about it from DHS, that there are some things about it when they're making data sets that they were unaware of. So for example, did you know that you can see the original DHS variable names as well as the IPOMS variable names in IPOMS DHS? Did you know that you can jump into a DHS survey at precisely the point where the question related to your variable was asked? Um, maybe you didn't know that you can save your work when you're creating a complicated IPOMS data set and come back to it later. Um, and maybe you didn't know that you can easily add a new variable or sample to one of your data sets. So those are the things, some of the things that we'll be covering today. All right. Let me tell you a little bit about who's here today. Uh, so I'm Liz Boyle. I'm a professor of sociology at the University of Minnesota. And along with Mir Dr. Miriam King, 
Um, Miriam and I are co-PIs on IPHMS DHS. Uh, today, Miriam manages the entire IPHMS DHS project. And Gretchen Corcoran is also with us today. Gretchen's been working as a data analyst for IPHMS DHS uh, for the past two years and has quickly become a behind the scenes expert on all aspects of the data tool. We also have to acknowledge our supporters, the Eunice Kennedy Shriver National Institutes for Child Health and Human Development, which funds IPHMS DHS, and our partners at the DHS program, um, who include the US Agency for International Development, and of course, ICF, which provides us with a lot of support. Now, I'd like to um, start with a, a quick survey to see how familiar people are with IPHMS DHS. So have you worked with the IPHMS DHS data before? You could answer that question and let me know. That will um, help me tailor my discussion to the level of um, information that people need. All right. So we're getting lots of responses, but we still need a few more. If people can uh, uh, just answer this quick poll, that would be awesome. Okay. Give it another minute. See if it continues to grow a little bit. All right, so on the basis of um, the answers to this poll, it seems like about, um, 40% of you have, have worked with IPHMS DHS before, but about 60% of you haven't. Um, so that is uh, very useful information for us. Now let me go away. All right. Thank you for helping us out with that. All right. So today I'm going to be focusing on three areas. First, um, constructing your data set. And we'll be spending most of the time today on that. Um, and you can, uh, this process begins with any of these uh, links that I've put squares around. So creating a data extract, selecting data, or browsing and selecting data over here. Um, the second thing that we're gonna cover is um, downloading your data set. Uh, and this is where you can go in and modify your data set. And the links to that are up here in my data or download um, or revise my data over here. And then finally, we'll be focusing some on the supplemental material, uh, which is on the left-hand side of the IPMS DHS homepage. And uh, as, again, this is at um, dhs.ipums.org, and we invite you to follow along on the website if you like. Okay, so we're gonna treat this as if we're doing some research today. Um, just to get, kind of give us a sense of flow. Um, and so our first basic question might be, how does intimate partner violence, also called IPV, vary over time and across countries? Now, one of the things we know is that tragic experiences can often put stress on couples and families, and that stress can increase the risk of I IPV. Um, and so we wanna ask a second question, uh, related to family stress, and that is, are women who recently had an infant die an increased risk of IPV? Um, so this is an important question because it can help policymakers provide timely interventions to prevent a spiral of violence within a household. Right. Um, so we're going to start with tips for constructing your IPMS DHS data set, and I'll just go through an overview of what we're gonna be talking about. So first we'll talk about display options, then selecting variables, variable documentation, and I wanna spend a little bit of time on the special case of child variables. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna change the screen and we will. to the website. All right, so here we are at the IPMS DHS website. And we're going to start by, um, let's start by logging in. You log in with your 
DHS username and password. And uh, you can proceed as a guest um, and you can see all the documentation that way, but you won't be able to download a data set until you log in. All right, so the first thing we do is we get data. And we have, in order to get data, we have to choose our unit of analysis for browsing. So what we mean by unit of analysis is each uh, record in the fo data file that you receive will be either women, young children, births, household members, or men. Um, all the women's info is available if you select children and all of the children's information is available if you select women, as I'll show you in a moment. So when you use IPUMS DHS, um, you're able to get by without, with a lot less um, merging and appending of data files. All right, we're gonna use women today. Um, and the first thing I wanna do is select samples. All right, so any sample that's in green is a sample that's available to me. Um, so you can see down here uh, that the one sample that's not available to me is Myanmar. I haven't gotten permission to use the Myanmar sample. But other than that, um, I do have access to all of the samples. And so I'm gonna select a few of these. Uh, let's start with uh, Ethiopia, I'll take the two most recent, um, then India, Jordan, Jordan. We'll do Mali and Pakistan. Now, um, of course, you'd want to have some basis for choosing your samples if you're doing a, going to do a comparison across samples. Um, we're picking these a little bit randomly. All right, the next thing you have to do is then remember to submit sample selections. And uh, what you see is 10 samples have been added to the data card up here. Uh, so this is the data card. Um, the data card is a tool that we use um, because people are familiar with online shopping. Uh, and so this is where you collect your data, your variables and your samples and where you check out. Um, and it looks like a shopping cart, but in fact, everything is free. All right, the next important thing is selecting the variables. Okay, you'll recall that we wanted to investigate intimate partner violence. So um, a good place to start is the topics drop down menu here. And you can see that there's domestic violence. Uh, and we wanna look at intimate partner violence. So we're gonna focus on domestic violence from partner or husband. All right, and a number of variables show up. Okay, so let's talk for a moment about the display of variables. I'm gonna go over three tips related to display. First, I want you to understand what the X's and dots are about. Um, then I want to show you how you can get the original DHS variable names. Um, and then finally, uh, just a quick look at some other display options. All right, so X's mean that the variable is available for that sample. Um, dots mean that the sample is not av available. So the question, um, one of the things that you see is that this module, the entire module is not asked in East Ethiopia 2011. And so I might wanna change my samples and let's say take out Ethiopia, submit sample selection. And here we are without Ethiopia. Okay, the other thing we can see is that questions like does husband doesn't trust her with money are generally not asked across all of these surveys. They're on, it's only asked in the Indian surveys. Um, and some of these are not asked for in very many of the samples at all. That's what the X's and dots are about. Next thing I wanna show you is how you can switch to see the original DHS variable names, which can be useful if you are, for example, are at the DHS user forum and uh, there someone is asked a question that's using the original um, DHS variable names. So if I go like this, and then I go down to topics, domestic violence. Now, what I see is the um, recode variables from DHS. 
if you don't get a recode variable, that means that there was no, this is not a standard variable, it's a country specific variable. Um, and so some of these do not have the original DHS names. Now we'll go back to the IPAM's names. All right, um, so that's a, a useful tip and clever tool. Another thing that you can do is change the display options. So say you wanted to look at um, not the long names of the countries, but you wanted to uh, see the short codes. Another thing that you can do is you can sort the um, list of variables by um, the order in which they appear in the survey. That's the IPMS default by which ones are asked most frequently, so they show up in the most samples, or you can sort them alphabetically. And I think I'll just stick with the IPMS default here. And I want you to see what the short codes look like. So if you wanted to see if a variable is available for a lot of surveys, this is very useful. And if you want to see the country abbreviations, what those two letter codes mean, you can see that over here. Okay, let's go back to long names because we have um, plenty of space. Um, so those are some of the cool possible adjustments to the display. Um, now I want to show you a few tips for selecting variables to put in your data set. And I'm going to highlight three tips about selecting variables. Uh, first, just the basic, how you select a variable, which probably most of you could figure out on your own. Um, then understanding pre-selected variables and also how to add lots of variables at once. Okay, so the most basic way to select variables is simply to check the large purple plus sign next to the variable. It's really hard to miss. And now you can see up in my data card, one variable has been added. Um, next, I'm gonna show you how you can pick a lot of variables at once. So um, that you do that with these little um, plus signs, double plus signs over here. So if I click on those, the first thing that's going to happen, okay, so right, so I click on them and all of these variables are selected. And then I can go through and say, okay, well, that's not available for all of my samples. And so I'm, I can go ahead and take those out of my data cart. Um, but now I've got 53 data, 53 variables in my data cart. So this is a very useful tool so that you don't have to add a whole lot of variables one by one. I want, also want to talk to you finally in terms of selecting variables about pre-selected variables. For this, I'm going to go to some of the really basic variables. So if we're doing our analysis of women who experience intimate partner violence and we want to understand their situation, um, chances are in that analysis, we're going to want to control for some core demographic variables. And in IPMS DHS, a lot of those variables are already pre-selected. So you can see here, age has this um, link next to it that says pre-selected. Resident is also pre-selected. Um, and what that means is that these are gonna appear in your data card, um, even if you haven't chosen them. I'm gonna now go into the data card um, because I wanna show you what these look like. So to go into the data card, you click on view card, and here we have 53 variables, but what you're gonna see is at the top of this list are a lot of variables, all of these that say pre-selected that are not part of our list of 53. And they include technical variables um, such as weights. So here we have um, the uh, weight for the domestic violence module, DV weight, which is a very important variable for us. And then they also include a lot of demographic variables like urban rural status, age, resident, religion, marital status. We've gone through and we've seen which variables are the most popular and that's how we determine what, are, what variables are pre-selected. All right, so um, that's information about uh, selecting variables. So we've gone through display, we've gone through selection, 
And I guess I'm going to pause for a second here. Um, Miriam, can you tell me, are there any um, questions at this point, or should I go right into? Um, um, yes, we have a, a question about the scope of um, IPAM's DHS. Um, the user asks, what proportion of DHS surveys are available on IPAM's DHS? And if not all surveys, is there an expected date when you plan to achieve full representation? And I'm gonna answer that one myself. Sure. So um, our, our funding um, from <clears throat> NIH um, for our first two uh, five-year periods gave us funding to include standard, um, continuous or interim DHS surveys for Africa, the Middle East, and um, uh, South Asia. And so those are the only regions of the world that we've included so far, and the only types of DHS surveys. We have not done the malaria monitoring or the AIDS monitoring or um, the service provider surveys, um, just uh, standard continuous and, <clears throat> and um, interim surveys for those um, regions. And most of the countries with public data uh, from those areas are already in IPAM's DHS or will be included in our, if not yet there, will be included in, in our next data release within a year. Um, then uh, we just submitted a proposal for another five years of funding, um, which we hope will allow us to uh, basically go global and cover um, uh, DHS surveys from um, all parts of the world, including Latin America, Oceania, um, the Caribbean, uh, Eastern Europe, and Central and East Asia that aren't currently included. Um, but we started at the point where there were so, so much work had already been done by the DHS program that to some extent we're still catching up. So even with another five years of funding and extending the scope, um, there will still be some surveys we probably don't have time to do in the next five years. For example, um, Mexico has one survey from the 80s. We wouldn't prioritize that as much as some of the uh, countries with more surveys and more recent data. And we won't get to um, AIS, MIS, or SPA surveys um, in the next um, five years. But we hope to get another five years of funding after that um, to sweep in more of um, what's there and also to make sure that we're always offering you um, timely, recently released data as quickly as we can get to it. So thanks for a great question. Yeah, thank you, Miriam. Um, so yes, what's exciting is that we will be trying to reach all uh, regions that have DHS variables um, in this next phase. Uh, so, um, but do keep checking back every few months because every few months we're adding variables or we're adding samples and sometimes new variables, although Miriam's got most of the variables in there now. All right, so we've talked about um, display and we've talked about variable selection. I wanna take a little bit of time to go back to finding variables. So one way to find variables is the topics dropdown, but you can also use the search function. Um, I always, whenever I'm on a website, I always would go right to the advanced search. I just find that it's usually helpful. So I try to find that advanced key, uh, link or the advanced tab. You click on that and let's go there. Um, okay. So again, we're interested in intimate partner violence and um, there's different ways to measure that. Let's say that we're interested in determining um, the experience of some of the most common forms of intimate partner violence. And one of the most common forms is uh, slapping. So we wanna see if there are questions about, let's say we wanted to um, find it, a question about uh, slapping. We don't know whether it, the, the question would be slap or slapped or slapping. So we're gonna use a wild card at the end. The asterisk is a wild card that will pick up any form of the word. And then we'll do a search for that. Okay. What we can see is that there are two variables. No, we would have the plus sign here. 
two variables in our data sets related to slapping. And um, these, the I is this variable is not available in the sample selected because these are things that would be in the children's file. Okay. Um, now, of course, we've already found these in the drop down menu, but a lot of times you're searching for questions that aren't, uh, you know, cohesively put together in one particular module. And so the search function can be really useful in that situation. All right. So now I want to talk about documentation, which is uh, one of the most important things about FMS DHS. And I'm always amazed when my students um, aren't fully utilizing the documentation. So what did I do there? I clicked on the name of the variable. This is the hot link and it takes me into the documentation. So across the top here, we've got all these tabs and every one of these tabs is uh, super useful. Um, the IPMS DHS is gonna jump you right into the codes tab, uh, which tells you how the variable is defined. And here, if you click on the case count view, you can see the unweighted frequencies. Now, a tip that I'll give you, and I tell my students, is a lot of times when you see a lot of very a lot of people in the not in universe category, that means uh, that can often mean a complicated skip pattern. So, for example, um, women are asked uh, how they're paid, whether they're paid in terms of cash or in kind. Um, and you'll look at that variable and you'll see that there's a lot of people who are not in universe. And a lot of those are women who are not working at all. And so what that means is there's often a recode task involved. Well, fortunately, one of the tabs up here is the universe tab and you can look into um, what the skip pattern was, who specifically was asked the question. Now, before you get too far into this, I'm gonna tell you in this particular case, um, there's not a complicated skip pattern. Something else is going on. And that is that in all of these cases, uh, only women, only a select number of women were interviewed with the domestic violence questions. And so that's why there's so many people who are not in universe. Um, and that's why you have to apply the domestic violence weight when you use these variables. Um, so the short, answer, the short summary of the universe statements here is that there's really not a problem with the universes. Um, they don't signal a lot of recoding and they're all pretty similar. Um, the other thing that's really awesome about documentation and definitely my favorite tab is that you can jump right into the survey text um, and it's gonna give you precisely the way the question was asked in each of the countries. So one of the things we see here with respect to the IPV module is that this question about slapping is usually integrated with other questions related to IPV. Um, so in India, it's, uh, does your husband ever do the following things to you, slap you, twist your arm or pull your hair? And you can go through and you can do a comparison of these questions. So here's India 2015. And one of the things that's interesting here is slapping comes after two other things, which might make a difference. Um, and let's say, so I could go through and I could look at all the survey questions and see how they compare. Um, Miriam and Gretchen have already written up a comparability statement, which will give me a lot of information here um, on that specific issue. Uh, so I don't have to come up with all of the comparability concerns on my own. Let's go back to the survey text. And now um, something that a lot of people miss is that you can view the entire document, that is you can view the entire survey with this little uh, link here, which, is, uh, which says text. So if I click on this, I'm gonna jump into the India 2005 DHS survey, right where these questions were asked. So I can scroll up and I can see what questions were asked before this and I can scroll down and I can see what questions were asked after this. Um, and I think this is super helpful for a couple of reasons. Um, one reason is because uh, this allows me, if I'm interested in a particular question, a lot of times all those questions are gonna be in the same place in the survey. And I can go, oh, um, 
there were these three other questions that were asked that are also going to be really useful for me. So I'm going to make sure I put those variables into my data card as well. And the second reason is the one I alluded to just a moment ago, where um, what, what was asked before women were asked if they've ever been slapped might affect how they respond to um, that particular question. And sometimes you have to scroll up a ways to see what important questions were asked before um, this question was asked. All right, so that's the survey text. And like I said, I think that is uh, super valuable. Okay. All right, um, so you'll wanna come back to this material over and over again to help you with your data analysis, even after you've downloaded your data file. Um, so you don't just download things from IPMS DHS and then never go back to it. You really wanna use all this documentation to your advantage. Okay, the last thing that I wanted to show you is um, the child variables, which are an interesting case. So uh, our research question was about intimate partner violence, but we were particularly interested in whether um, having a child who recently passed away increases the risk of IPV. And so for that, we're gonna need some information on children. Let's go to the search function. And I'm in advanced search still. And I know that there's a question that asks women whether their children are still alive. So I'm gonna search for alive. And again, I'm gonna put a wild card on the end of this. And you should always put a wild card on the end of your search terms when you're searching for children. And you'll see why in just a moment. Okay. So here are some variables that we uh, get. And you know we get, we're getting 17 variables here. So you might kind of wonder which one. A lot of times a clue is the one that's available for a lot of your surveys. And in fact, that is the case here. Um, so what I wanted to show you um, is the reason we use a wild card is that the children variables have underscore all after them, because what you were doing is you are selecting multiple variables. You're selecting information for all of this women, uh, woman's children. Um, so if I click on the variable name, it's going to give me a little bit more information about that. Because there's lots of variables, the codes are not all that uh, useful here, but the description is very important. So it indicates whether each birth reported by a woman of childbearing age is alive, and it consists, consists of 20 separate variables covering the most recent birth up to the 20th most recent birth. Now, of course, not all women are gonna have had 20 births, but DHS allows you to um, account for possibly up to 20 Verse. The other thing, the other kind of variable that's common here is women are asked a lot of questions about births they had in the last five years. And um, the DHS standard there is to allow women to answer those questions for up to six children. Um, so you'll get some information on up to 20 children and you'll get more information on up to six children. In IPMS DHS, all of those kinds of variables are signaled with this underscore all. Okay, uh, so let's go back and I'm gonna go ahead and add all of those variables to my data card as well. All right. Um, okay, so now we've gone over a lot of tips to help you construct your data set. We've talked about um, documentation um, and we've talked about the children variables. Next, I'm gonna to go to tips for downloading your data set, um, which IPMS calls a data extract. Uh, before I do that, I wanna see, Miriam, are there any questions at this point or should I just move on? Uh, you can just keep going, Liz. Okay, thanks. All right, so um, let's go back to all right, um, so uh, the next thing that we're going to cover are tips when downloading your data set. Um, 
So there's not so many tips here, um, but I think all of them are really particularly useful. Let's kind of go over a preview of them. So the first thing is uh, setting preferences with respect to your downloads. The second is saving and returning to your project and modifying your data file. The third thing is understanding a, your personal data page. A lot of people don't realize that they have a personal data page or they don't know how to get to it. So we're gonna talk about that. Um, and then finally, troubleshooting the download process. So let's go back to the website. And um, we're gonna start by constructing our data file now. Okay, so earlier I showed you the data cart and to start the process of downloading your data, you click on view cart. And we've seen this before when we were talking about pre-selected variables. So the first thing you do is you just say, create my data extract, which simply means your tailored data file. Um, and the, this page is gonna come up. So there's a couple of important things on this page. Um, first, think about the kind of data format that you want. So what you're going to get automatically if you don't make any selection is you're going to get a fixed with ASCII file um, that's a .dat file. Now, if you use a statistical software program like Stata or SPSS, you'd prefer to have this in your own um, software package format. And so if you simply click on change, you're gonna be able to select the kind of data file that you want. Um, so I personally use Stata, so I'm gonna select Stata. And then the other thing that you can do here and definitely take advantage of this is you can name your data file. So I'm gonna call this extract for July 27 webinar. And then I click Submit Extract, and it may take a moment, but it's going to take me to my uh, home page, my data extract page. Okay. And one of the reasons why it's really useful to um, give your data files a name is so that you can go back to them later. Okay. So here's my, my data page. And um, let me go through the columns here so that you understand what we're seeing. Uh, first, we have the number of data extracts, which isn't super important, um, but that is gonna be the name of this data file. It's gonna be IDHS00154.dta. Uh, and we have the date when it was created. Right now it's processing it. But you can see earlier today, I downloaded a different state of file, and this is what it's going to look like when it's ready to go. It'll be a green button, and I just click on that green button, and that will download it. Now, if I didn't change my preferences to get a state of file, this is what I would get. It would look like this. I would have a DAT file, a fixed format ASCII file, and I could download that, and I could download this state of do file run this data do file and it would translate this into a DTA file, a Stata file. So if you do that, um, it's not that big of a deal. It's just a little more convenient to put it into a Stata code. I've got these code books, which are um, not all that useful, but I'll show you the DDI does have, there's one thing I like about the DDI, which is I can jump to the variable descriptions, just again, to show you what I did there. I clicked on variable descriptions and then I can, jump into the documentation for any of my variables here. These are all hot links. So that's one of the useful things about the code book. Um, now, this is a really important column too. If I decided that I wanted to change my data file, so um, let me back up for a second. Okay, so say I'm working on a really complicated data file and I've got um, all my samples in there and I've got a lot of variables, uh, but then uh, you know something's happening at home and I have to quit um, and I wanna make sure I don't lose that. Well, I can just run through that process of creating a data extract at that point. And then I can go back later and revise it and I'll go to variables and I'll 
change my variables. And it's just going to take me back to the variable selection page. And I'm like, oh, wait, I forgot to put in all those core demographic variables. So I want to add those to my part too. And now I just go back to my cart and I create that data extract again. And uh, it's going to call it a revision. And lo and behold, I can add in, I can pick up where I left off. I can add more variables or I can modify a, a file that I created a long time ago. I'm going to skip to a new version here. All right, so where can I find this? There's my data right here. That's where I usually go. And that's going to take me right to my page. All right. Now, some of these you'll see no longer have the data file, um, but you can still go in and revise them and create a new data file here just by clicking on revise. The other thing I can do for these where there's no data file over here is if I hit resubmit, it's just going to generate a, exactly the same file that I had before here. Here are my names. And if I changed my mind and decided that, oh, I really should have called that something else, I can go in and change those. Um, and so there's a lot of interesting things on the extract page. Last thing I want to talk about with respect to the download page is uh, sometimes people have a little bit of trouble opening their data files. And when that happens, it's usually related to um, the compression software. Uh, so you can click on, if you're having trouble opening your data file, you can, whoops, that's not helpful. You can click on this link here and that's gonna help you uh, with the, the unzipping process. So you receive the data at, in a zipped format to save space. And here we see how to download it and then how to decompress it. Most people, on, it, it decompresses automatically, it unzips automatically when you double click on it or open it um, because you have a decompression software already installed on your computer. But occasionally that doesn't happen. And then here we give you instructions on how to download this free unzipping software and information on how you can unzip your files. So in terms of troubleshooting, I would say that's probably the number one problem that people run into on their data pages, and that's really easy to solve. Okay, so that concludes my tips on saving and accessing your data file. Um, do we have any questions about that? Um, we, have some, we have some good general questions that I think we should handle here. Sure. Um, so we have a question, are there any variables for which uh, the FMSDHS harmonized variables differ substantially from the original um, DHS variable coding? And I'm going to answer that. Um, sure. Because we uh, are uh, promised to not lose any detail, we often convert um, a variable that might have just been one digit in uh, an original data file into a two digit variable. Um, we use what we call composite coding, where the first digit is consistent across all samples and additional detail goes into the second or third digit. So an example of that would be the question about literacy. Um, some samples for can you read um, just have yes, no. But later samples, especially when they gave people a, a card to read sentences, had more um, granularity where the, the um, uh, interviewer uh, noted either the person reads um, with difficulty or reads without difficulty. And so um, we've made the literacy variables into two digit variables where um, we have codes of yes, reads with difficulty, yes, reads easily, and no. So, um, you know, often, uh, we have additional um, additional digits and changes in coding to keep that detail that's only available in some countries and some samples. And then the, another question is, are there any um, harmonized variables that have coding you think is difficult or prone to misinterpretation? 
Mm. Um, I would say it's uh, just a really good idea if you're going to be using a variable to read the documentation about it. You know, read the look at the codes, look at the uh, description, look at the comparability text, um, because um, that way any nuances um, you'll know you won't be assuming. So um, it's hard for me to say, you know, in advance, oh, this one is particularly tricky. But just in general, if a, if a variable is important enough for you to include, it's important enough for you to read the documentation. Um, then we have a, another uh, geographic question I'm going to refer to you, Liz, and that's okay. about um, uh, is there access to uh, subnational data um, below the country level? Can you uh, talk about sure. that? Um, okay. Yeah, well, thanks for that um, that contribution, Miriam. I, I do want to emphasize that um, Miriam and Gretchen they don't go in and simply do recodes and then you know um, throw information away, which is the way that an individual researcher would usually do this. You know, they really do save every detail. So there is nothing in the original DHS files related to a variable that you cannot get in IFMS DHS <clears throat> if you choose that uh, if that's the information that you want to use. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to talk a little bit about um, uh, geography. So let me just select um, a sample. Oh, I think I'll do Tanzania and I can select all of those maybe. To, so yeah, the quick answer is yes, you can get subnational material and it's actually super cool. All right, geography general, that's just like urban rural and things like that. Um, single sample geography is exactly what it sounds like. So for every sample, Tanzania 91, Tanzania 96, 99, 2000, so on and so forth, there is one single um, uh, piece of information regarding those regions. And you can see what those regions are. Here's two th geo underscore TZ 2004 would be the geography regions for Tanzania in 2004. I think that's if I recall, is V023 or V024 in um, the DHS? I can't recall the region variable name, but it's like that. And you can see there's a lot of them in 2004. Um, now, what's really cool, so that's neat, but what's really cool is you can go into geography and get the integrated variables. And this is gonna be a common footprint across all of the Tanzanian regions. So you can make, uh, if you use this variable, you can easily make comparisons across time and know that the boundaries of the regions you're looking at are gonna be comparable. Um, so here's what the variable names again give you a clue. So geography variable, it's for Tanzania. And this first one uh, works from 1991 to 2015. Let's see what it looks like. So it goes way back. And usually when you go way back, you get um, fewer regions. So there's six regions that go all the way back. And we have professional geographers who are working with these boundary files. Um, so this is not just us eyeballing it or based on names. Now, if you decide you only want to go back as far as 1996, you can get a lot more regions in Tanzania. Um, but these, again, will be the same across all of the um, all of the samples for Tanzania from 1996 up to 2015. I'm going to talk a little bit more about geography in a moment. All right, any other questions, Miriam? Um, yes, I just want to also note with geography, and you might have been going to make this point too, but um, as, as many of the um, attendees know, um, some samples include GPS uh, data points for sample clusters. Um, we do not distribute those through um, IPM's uh, DHS. You need to get those from the uh, from uh, the DHS program, um, and uh, but you can link those to a um, data file that you make um, from IPM's DHS, and mm -hmm. we use those um, sample points, for example, to make our contextual variables. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go on to another question, which is someone is noting that um, they're, they're finding that um, having difficulty dealing with codes for missing data. 
Um, and they ask, how do I get data excluding missing data? Um, how, how would you advise someone uh, to deal with missing data? Right. Uh, yeah, so with um, the way that IPMS DHS works is that uh, missing data will have a, a code. So for example, when we were looking at the um, domestic violence slapping variable, um, occasionally women did not answer that question. And so um, those individuals would be assigned a, a missing value. Um, and in IPMS DHS, that's gonna be a number. So the short answer is that you need to write, uh, you need to recode the variables to define whatever that number is as a missing value. Um, so that's how the missing values work. We're actually um, working on a, a technical change to IPMS, um, not just IPMS DHS, but all the IPMS variables for all the IPMS products to make it so that missing values are automatically defined when you download the data. But right now they're not, so you need to do a um, you need to tabulate the data or run a frequency and then um, do a quick recode to get rid of those missing values. Okay, I'm gonna um, move on then to the last part of our um, last part of the presentation, which is related to uh, the supplemental material. Uh, okay, um, so um, I do want to say, um, you know, thanks again for being here and uh, we're, we're doing well for timing. We're going to have just about just the right timing for this. So one thing we're going to talk about is online geography resources, which because of the good question we just had, we've talked about some already. Then we're going to talk about sample level documentation, tools and user support, and citing the correct version of IPMS DHS. All right, so let's go back to this, the screen. And I'm going to click on IPMS DHS um, and we'll see the supplemental material on the side here. Okay, so people asked about geography and you can get information about geography over here. Um, I've talked about the spatially harmonized and country specific geography. I just showed you that for Tanzania. Um, if you click on that link, you can actually go down and you'll be able to see what integrated geography is available for every, every country. And you can download the shape files if you're a geographer. Um, and you can click right into the um, data so that you can see, oops, I still have Tanzania, I forgot that. So I'd have to do Tanzania. Um, but anyway, this generally will allow you to jump right into see what the regions are for um, each of your regional variables. So there's lots of stuff useful on that page. Um, also, there's linking to IMPOMS International Census Microdata. You can link at the first administrative or second administrative level. Um, so if you're interested in those things, be sure to check that out. And I also want to mention we have a geography webinar that we did previously, and that's posted online if you're particularly interested in geography, which is one of the coolest things about it from CHS. Also under the supplemental data, and also talked about in our previous webinar, is all the contextual variables. Importantly, if you go to the overview, you're going to see what all the variables are. Um, but you're also going to get the source data citations, which are important to include in anything that you publish. All right. What else do we have over here? Um, we also have sample level documentation. And I wanna show you one thing I particularly like, and that's the questionnaires in the original language. So one of the things about IPMS DHS in our documentation, you're seeing an English translation of the surveys, but perhaps you wanna see the surveys in their original language. Now, previously you had no choice. You had to see them in their original language, um, but with IPMS DHS, you can now see them that way, or you can see them in English. So let's just take as an example, Benin 2011. If I click on the PDF and then I go to my downloads, I can open up um, the Benin survey uh, in French and I can see precisely how a question was asked. And of course, if I'm a native French speaker, that's gonna be really important for me to determine whether 
uh, there were nuances in the way that question was asked that may not be evident in the English translation. Another thing that's really important here is the revision history. This is related to um, IPAM's DHS. Every time we do a data release, um, there are some small things about the data set that change in addition to adding samples. Um, and all of those things are captured in the revision history. So if you um, use the data, write an article, get comments from reviewers, and you have to go back and download the data again, you can see whether there were any changes made to any of the variables that are crucial to you in that revision history. Um, I also want to talk about some of the awesome support things we have over here. So um, under user notes, the IPUMS DHS user guide is uh, particularly valuable um, for individuals who have limited internet bandwidth because it kind of walks through with pictures every step of, of the process. And so you don't have to be looking at a video to access that. Um, another one of our most popular user notes is the vaccination schedule. And as this explains at the top, you might wanna determine whether a child received the recommend, recommended vaccinations at the recommended times. So you know whether people got a vaccination, but you don't know necessarily, unless you're a doctor um, or are from a particular health ministry, you don't know what vaccinations were supposed to have happened and when. Um, and this gives you all of that information. And so um, lots of people uh, visit this page to get that information about vaccinations. And that's even, you know, whether or not they're downloading IPMS data. They use this with the regular DHS data too. Um, all right. Uh, in terms of support, we have lots of, uh, lots of different kinds of support, um, including our user forum. And I'll show you a website or a Email, I'll give you an email in a minute where you can also email in your particular questions. Um, I want to emphasize how important it is to cite IPMS DHS. Uh, when you cite us, um, that's really important for us to get continued funding so that we can get all of the samples into IPMS DHS. Um, and it also allows other researchers to know which version of the data set you were using. So that's going to improve replicability of um, research results. Another cool thing over in the supplemental material is the bibliography where you can get ideas about how to use um, IPMS DHS by looking at what, what other people have done. So you just click on IPMS DHS under the data collection and you search and um, you know, we have hundreds of different kinds of uh, research that's been done using IPMS DHS, and that's all available here. If you, if you do publish something, um, please drop us a line and let us know so that we can include it in our bibliography. All right. Uh, I'm going to go back to the... Um, Active. We're almost done, very, very close to done here. Back. And a little bit of a conclusion. So we've already talked about the samples and countries that are in IPMS DHS. Miriam went over that. Asked you to please cite IPMS DHS. And then just to recap some highlights, I think we've probably covered dozens of tips and secrets here, but um, just some highlights, variable names are hot links to information, including survey text, entire surveys, and variable universes, so don't miss the documentation. Um, you can easily save and modify your searches and data extracts just by going to the My Data link, and the homepage sidebar contains many additional resources. So we are almost out of time, but if there are any final questions, um, so now we time. We've had a we've had a few um, quite specific questions that we've answered okay. um, just with a direct message to the person, but I uh, just want to emphasize that if you have a a question about a particular variable, a particular sample, uh, problems with your data extract or interpreting something, um, then please send a, a message asking for help to ipums at umn.edu, our user support team. We have 
uh, dedicated staff who, um, you know, it's their, their job to just answer user questions for free. Um, they generally do it very promptly. And uh, they also, um, if they don't know uh, the answer to something, say for IPMS DHS, they would reach out to me and Gretchen um, to, to get, um, you know, sort of more expert um, insight, or sometimes we have to research something to figure it out. But um, that's a really great free resource. And also, um, you know, when you email them, you can do some, there can be some back and forth sometimes to clarify um, a question or um, provide, you know, further details. So they will really work with you to get you answers that you need, um, you know, just make use of them and also consider consulting or sending questions to the user forum um, for uh, IPMs, as well as, of course, you'll probably all know about the, the DHS user forum. All right. Well, once again, thanks so much for being here. If you have any comments about this a webinar, feel free to um, email ipums at umn.edu as well. We're going to be posting this as well as answers to all of the questions, um, whether they come in, came in today or are going to come in in the next uh, day or so. Um, we'll post those all online um, so that this is a tool that you can use and share in the future. Thanks, everyone. And thanks, Miriam and Gretchen for and Kari for your support here. <laughs>